So Matt Walsh of the Blaze continues to be, quite frankly, uh, the uh, biggest idiot, I guess, on the right. Uh, and that's really quite the uh, quite the the moniker for him to have because there's there's quite a few idiots on the right. But I feel like this guy constantly finds a way to just step on it. And this is no different. Here is Matt Walsh uh, just recently. I think this was just yesterday, actually, if not the day before. But it was trending online yesterday because it got out. Uh, where he had some uh, hot takes about uh, women working in the sports field. It wouldn't be fair to say that all female sports reporters are like Lindsay. But even so, I must say, this situation only demonstrates why I personally prefer for sports broadcasts, especially football broadcasts, to be handled mostly by men. Lindsay, though worse than the average, even as far as female sports reporters go, is definitely not the only female to enter into this mostly male space and seek to feminize it. She wants the football stadium to be quiet and gentle, considerate, respectful of personal space. She wants it to be a more feminine environment. She's not trying to assimilate herself into the culture of football fans. She is rather hoping that they assimilate themselves to her. This is a problem across our culture. Sports just happen to be an area where the problem is especially pronounced and obvious, females enter into areas that have typically catered and mostly belong to men. And, um, and then, often quite successfully, they try to, to change them, to emasculate them, and thereby destroy the primary reason for their existence in the first place. This phenomenon is so far reaching in football, especially, that they're even changing the rules now to make the game itself more gentle and feminine. Football is, you know, still violent, but it's less violent than it used to be. This year, they're even focusing on penalizing players who say mean or rude things to each other on the football field. They've been doing this during the preseason. Pause it one second. Oh the NFL. God, jeez. Uh, so just to clear up with that Lindsay he's talking about, this is from WTOC sports director uh, Lindsay Goh, who said she was all kinds of violated during the college football matchup between Clemson and Georgia. Goh, who has worked at the Savannah, Georgia CBS affiliate since 2019, said fans touched her and her equipment while she was set uh, while she set up for live hits during the game on Saturday. I, for, well, first off, so in other words, she was um, assault, like I'm uh, like assaulted, yeah. sexually assaulted. Right, right. Um, and obviously, it's her fault for entering the male arena here. Well, what is like, first off, I wish that Emma were here today uh, because I mean, just and then second off, like who, who wants to place a bet? Let's just start with the most sort of like low hanging fruit on Matt Walsh's physical ability when it comes to playing any type of sports. <laughs> I mean, I think honestly, uh, Daily Wire versus Majority Report basketball game, please. Go, go, please. Let's, play, let's play any sport. Any sport, um, and, and literally, and I probably got twenty five years on on Matt Walsh in terms of age, and I will outplay him in any sport. We should do dodgeball, uh, yeah. not just because I watched the movie again, <laughs> but because I have quite the arm on me, and you know I'm willing to be a, a ringer. I, I I would imagine that you could seriously send Matt Walsh to the hospital with one of those red rubber balls. Uh, but the also the other thing about this is like. This guy, it's like he grew up on Rush Limbaugh from like 20 years ago and is still rerunning this thing. Like I'm old enough to remember when Lisa Olson uh, had these charges about players in the New England Patriots locker room in the 80s. And it was um, it was grotesque then. Just go back. I mean, like the idea that like somehow women and they're doing this across the culture, right? Like the things that he says are. Well, A, the things that he associates with women as opposed to men is absurd. The reason why they're trying to make football less violent is because people are getting brain injuries. That's what I was thinking, the Will Smith movie, Concussion. Like, I never watched yeah. it, but that was the, like, the whole thing a few years ago when I was in grad school. Like, it was coming out that, like, they had buried all that evidence that, like, players were having concussions and it was leading to them to commit suicide, have, you know, die early in, like, their 50s. And, you know, that's why they're trying to feminize the game so, like, you know, uh, players can live past 55. Yeah, because it's bad for a sport if LeBron James, for instance, says, I'm not going to let my children play uh, football because it's going to hurt their brains. 
I, this I was mean, a big thing. Like, uh, just to, I mean, it's been a big thing, but especially got really big in like the the mid two thousands. I remember specifically, um, there was an institute. There's an institute in Boston that basically studies this, and they collect, uh, the, you know, players donate their brains after they die, and they find out all these horrendous things. Like, for example, this blew up in two thousand seven when the pro wrestler Chris Benoit uh, killed his wife and kids, and then committed suicide, and his brain got sent to this institute, and they found that this forty some some forty some odd year old guy had the brain of like a 90 year old because of all the concussions and hits to the brain he took so this has become like an increasingly big thing where people are worried not only about like you know uh the the, you know whether they're getting hurt now but whether they're going to survive in terms of you know later committing suicide or hurting somebody else and all right, let's just take this out of the realm of, of, of football. I mean, this is just, you know, it's it's just absurd because um, it, 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 he's saying that this is also sort of like something that's happening with the rest of our society, like it's being feminized, like women are going into. I'm not sure what areas he's talking about that women don't belong in the, the rest of our society. But what is the opposite of emasculate? Like, where is the where is the word that means you're making it less feminine? Defeminize. There is none. Like the, 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 the concept of emasculation is um, th- there are normative values that are built into this, suggesting that like the the state of normalcy and of uh, the state of like vibrancy or virility is necessarily something to do with men like this is this guy is so regressive and um i don't know if this is, is he like a hardcore christian is that what's going on he's like a christian yeah, he's a, he's, yes he's a very religious guy he used to be a a blogger uh, but like you know his own blog where he talked about his christian family and their upbringing and how is he's one of those guys who are going on and on and on about kids shouldn't be wearing masks in school. I think he's even showed up at one of these things and turns out his kids don't even go to public school. They're homeschooled. They don't even go to school with other right, kids. Right, at all. Right. And he's demanding that other kids not wear masks when they go to school. It's amazing. It, it uh, just seems like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say all the examples that like I would imagine Matt Walsh in that kind of type of like very cuck focused far right commentator thinks are like examples of society becoming more feminized are always like deeply embarrassing things like oh there are women sports reporters now you know and that's an example of how the sport is becoming feminized and like all of the abuses that cheerleaders still face like structurally in terms of their their contracts and like what they're expected to like promote themselves and all that stuff that doesn't count for like how it's still very masculine focused or when like the ad for like a transformers toy doesn't isn't sufficiently like masculine enough like it seems just like the best example of how deeply embarrassing the far right has gotten in the sense that they feel no shame in like going my entire sense of like masculine identity is attached to like whether or not i see like a a woman view a sports cast or if like the marketing copy for like a toy or soft drink is just a little too gender neutral like that's the the entirety of their focus and i don't know i guess there's a a big enough fan base for it that people forget that it's it's embarrassing it's just really embarrassing to always be complaining that you know women at the gym make you feel like somehow less of a man because they have like pole dancing classes at the gym and that makes it like less of a like a safe space for you it's like it's it's just deeply embarrassing it's embarrassing to like to admit that your entire like identity is associated with like marketing copy developed by like admin in the 80s while like doing cocaine to sell you like you know teenage mutant ninja turtle toys and now you're mad that like they don't have april o'neill in like a bikini anymore it's like it's it's embarrassing do you think there's anyone under the age of like 35 that um that watches matt walsh and doesn't just go like what is wrong with this dude like honestly like we got calls when i was in air america in 2005 or 6 i can't remember exactly when it was we would get calls from people who were taking the lead of Rush Limbaugh complaining about uh, Dick Durbin wearing a pink tie <laughs> on the floor of the Senate, saying that this was a function of the feminization of America. Uh, the idea that the color pink, I mean, like, what, how mentally like, undeveloped do you have to be to, 
Like the color pink. It's just like, are you serious? And like, even then, like that five year old only has a problem with the color pink because the, some moron that they're associated with says, so like, that's a girl's color. Like, I mean, who, like, honestly, like, who actually, who actually shows up at work and says, you know, I'm going to be talking about this today. You know what I'd like to do is I would like to put, I would like to put Emma and Matt Walsh on a Zoom call that is broadcast to as many people possible. And they can start talking about football. And I wonder like how many seconds into it, seconds, not even minutes, would everyone realize Matt Walsh doesn't have a clue. The depth of knowledge that Emma has relative to him in terms of football is like, it's like, I don't know, putting a, 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 I, me into a classroom with like a Nobel winning, you know, physicist uh, in terms of, you know, judge the phys like it would be embarrassing uh, for this guy. And then I don't know, I would justify it like uh, to, to his, his followers. It really is impressive, though, to be, I don't know, talking about like the feminization of football at this age. I mean, I, just, I mean, even any fun fact a person will tell you too, like someone who like likes bar trivia, that pink wasn't even always a, bo- a girl's color. It, was, it used to be a boy's color because it's like a derivative of red. And so like 150 years ago, like, bo- like girls wore blue and, you know, 150 years from now, who knows what will be the color. But, you know, Dick Durbin was also just a big Kanye fan in the early 2000s. <laughs> so like that's why he was wearing pink. So, you know, he's wrong on both fronts is really what I'm trying to say. But it's amazing that they can construct entire platforms about like these imaginary, but also very small grievances, because if you're going to like lie about something, you know, or find something to get mad about, that's not true. You must go real big, like a pink tie or like, I guess the tan, the famous tan suit that everyone's always talking about, you know, they're just worse things to, you know, lie about, I guess. It's just funny though, like as a conservative content maker, it, it, I guess it's easier to talk about the um, the reporter who re- female reporter who got a little bit uppity asking for you know people not to grab her ass, uh, <laughs> than say like, hey, uh, we shouldn't be spending money on infrastructure and taxes are too high. Right, exactly, exactly. I know I, 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 I'm not going to be reading into that. Uh, I'm just going to go with the like, of course, football is getting too feminized. You know what? I really asked, play. The, the, to have that kind of like, I, I, like I, to me, that just like immediately just um, the first thing I hear when when someone like that, particularly like at that age. Right. Like, I mean, I can understand like a 75 year old guy sitting around complaining about how like, you know, I like the back when boys were boys and girls were girls, you know, like whatever it is. But somebody at Matt Walsh's age, it just seems to me like he's there's like internal struggles there that he's having issues with. Well, this is the guy who the last time we spoke, well, last time I spoke about him on this show was just a a week or two ago when he was uh, saying the only reason why uh, Governor Christy Nome is anybody is because she's a she's a hot woman or something like that. Do you remember that, Matt? Yeah, yeah. She said the only like and and she's what is it like? Thank goodness she's hot because I don't know what else she offers or something like that because she right, right. Oh, he, he said it, yeah, she because she's under more. the age of 50 and because she's under the age of 50, he said. Right. He went on for like 60, full 60 seconds about like in staccato about like the things that might be wrong with her that would make her less attractive than men, which would make her less valuable. But I think that you're right, you know, Sam, in the sense that like the language just never seems to come naturally to him, either because he's trying to like, you know, thread that line or thread that needle of like not actively saying that people deserve to be sexually harassed for, like while they're working or also like just, you know, he's not from the generation where like, yeah, you know how skirts are like they you know, right. are always complaining. Like, so he has to find some way to like articulate it in a way that, you know, makes sense, I guess, to like the mismatch of 90 year olds and like 21 year olds who make up his audience. But, you know, it just doesn't sound like it's native to him. Like, I definitely believe he's a bigot, but not necessarily the kind of old timey bigot that like, you know, Steve Crowder has an easier time channeling. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. Well, it, I think you said something interesting there, uh, uh, Brandon, where I don't think it is just the old people. I think he is also speaking to like, I'm sure there's some like, you know, young, you know, uh, edgy, conservative, like MAGA kids, like TikTok MAGA kids who go and watch Matt Walsh. And they would probably have that thought process, too. So he is trying to be that middle ground for that 75 year old Sam was talking about. And then these kids who are just like, yeah, girls shouldn't be in sports because they're like in high school or whatever and haven't lived in the real world yet. Yeah, I mean, I think he appeals less to the, I think to the kids, but not the, maybe the edgy ones, but like the ones that are prematurely like aged into like, they're like 
16 year old Mark Levins already. <laughs> the kids who come to like high school in a suit, like, you know, to make, exactly, everyone, else yeah. feel, <laughs> to make everyone else feel they, weird. Yeah, wash kills with those kids. Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.